and welcome to All Sem 1M. I'm Florence John Duo. Having appropriate shelters that can withstand extreme weather conditions is vital in Papua New Guinea. The International Organization for Migration, or IOM, has been conducting safe shelter workshops in various provinces, in which the last leg of the workshop was on the Trobrian Island in Milne Bay Province. Papua New Guinea is prone to natural disasters, thus building structurally appropriate shelter is critical in times of disasters. The International Organization for Migration, or IOM, has been carrying out safe shelter workshops in various communities in Morobe, Oro, the autonomous region of Bougainville, and Milne Bay provinces. IOM has identified shelter as a major factor in ongoing disaster risk reduction and preparedness strategies. They recently visited Milne Bay Province carrying out the safe shelter workshop on the Trobrian Island. Following a hazard profiling that we did for Papua New Guinea, we actually noted that Milne Bay is actually one of the provinces that are actually being affected by sea level rise. And because it is actually almost like 11% marine, and it has got over 200 islands that are actually being impacted by sea level rise. We actually decided that we can actually do an intervention targeting this province to find a durable solution on how best we can assist community to cope and adapt to the changing climate and how they can mitigate intervention that deals with the climate change. Normally the passers training is a participatory approach for shelter awareness that is normally used for communities to identify risk that affects the shelter. So this process is actually a self-examination and a, a self-prescription -prescri by the community and do a, a proper diagnostic to their problem and then actually find a treatment to it using local best methodology that works for them. So they need to identify the source of their impact on shelter. When they identify the source of the problem, then they actually find what are the possible ways they can address it at community level. After identifying those possible ways, then they start to make up an action plan of how to address those issues. There are some issues also that have got to do with the presence of material. If you look at the Trobian Islands, there's actually absence of actually proper building materials. Why? Because of the depletion of the forest here in the district. So given that scenario, the community need to find a solution on shelter, how they can actually have proper housing, but in an environment where they don't have adequate materials. For the Trobrian Island people, their way of building homes has a strong cultural link. They build homes leveled on the ground or just above the ground level, as their homes must not be higher than their chiefs or the paramount chief. In 1991, the provincial government, through the premier, and I came up and uh, opened the uh, village birth attendance at Loshia. Within the opening of that uh, particular centre, the paramount chief of our Trobin Islands, uh, paramount chief um, Pulayas Daniel, made a decree saying this. Every Trobin Islander now be, should be able to build their houses on high posts, and also make windows so that they'll be able to go up and sweep underneath the houses and also let the wind come to give some good ventilation. This is a decree from the chief. It's out of this decree we should also build on. It's not a new thing. So we should also go and see the implementer decree of the chief. So coming out of Trobin Island, a lot of houses if you go up, most of us still low. They still fear about the chieftaincy. Uh, chiefs have to have high houses. The rest should be low. 
However, according to site visits by the IOM team, they have observed that the people have realized the disaster risks and are using their initiative to make the necessary decisions for their own safety. My visit to Lawyer Ward and to Okupoku and the southern tip of the island, you realize that uh, there are some communities where their houses have been destroyed by either by sea swell or by le raising levels of the water. So we, I visited one community where people have already relocated from their original site. Some people are still there, about 20 families, but the rest of the families, almost about 100 families, have already moved to higher ground. But the challenge is the shelter which they have as a community uh, actually need to be upgraded in terms of height above the, the ground. So now the community are working on technical designs on how best they can improve their shelter to be able not to be affected by any sea swell that is likely going to occur. When it comes to disasters, we want to make sure that people be able to build houses that can be able to uh, withstand the force of the wind, for example, a cyclone, and be able to see, is it safe to continue staying in that place in, ca in case of skin tides or cyclone, or so we move out. That's the purpose of this exercise here. The affected people, particularly from Ware Islands, uh, represent for Ware, and uh, Wagifa, and also Simsimla, and plus uh, um, other stakeholders here. It's their land, their island, they're the ones who make decisions whether to continue, staying where they are, it means they have to strengthen their buildings, what type of materials. If not, they move out. Since the sea level rise is uh, claiming their land, they have to move out somewhere. So these are, these are some of the process going up, trying to make this aware, uh, aware to the people. They make own decisions. The Safe Shelter Workshop encourages locals to build safe shelters using the resources they have available. Actually emphasize on one aspect, that any intervention that the community will do should be based on existing capacity. They should not actually dream of something that is not actually within their community. It has to be a community-based approach. So what you have is actually what you utilize for the adaptation and also upgrades and also to make your shelter become resilient. So the issue could be to address using modern materials. But when you actually address it through using modern materials, there should be adequate skills to use those modern materials for shelter construction. Because the main problem is, if you don't have people who are skilled to use it, you're actually going to increase the risk of to the disaster. So it's not about the materials being available, but it's also about the skills that are available. who have attended the Safe Shelter Workshop came from Kawa and Konia communities in the Simsimla Ward and Ware Island. During the workshop, they identify the types of natural disasters that are frequent in their respective areas and came up with strategies to minimize the impacts. The Safe Shelter Workshop saw participants travel in from the Simsimla Ward, Kawa and Konia communities and Ware Island. The participants expressed to all Samoanem that they have learned a lot of strategies that they will consider whilst building their shelters. I'm quite happy that uh, Ware, as one of the communities that face uh, a disaster, uh, actually we are in a, in a disaster prone zone and uh, with this uh, training um, I'm quite happy that uh, we were privileged you know, to attend so we uh, learn um, more about you know, how we should uh, actually you know, uh, come up with you know, uh, some kind of you know, solution. You know, it's not to actually you know, eradicate the, you know, whatever we are going go to go through the disasters, you know, but actually we minimize uh, the effect of uh, how a cyclone or whatever you know, natural disaster that's going to come uh, on our way. 
Of course, before we had bush material houses, and that were recent cyclone Ita that hit us um, really affected our community. So our people now change their attitude or their way of uh, you know uh, coming up with structures that can you know withstand the strong winds or cyclone or something. Because we've lost 53, uh, sorry, not 53, 57 bush material houses during that uh, time that cyclone uh, hit us. And uh, not only the bush material houses, but we lost some permanent houses and the semi-permanent houses. And um, now uh, people have made arrangements with the uh, bigger islands to actually bring uh, bush materials, not really bush materials, but uh, I think the provincial government also provided us a uh, uh, walkabout saw. So we made arrangements with those bigger islands to cut timber for us. You know? So that arrangement is in place now. And uh, our people are now building houses that can withstand the cyclone, you know, force of cyclone. ...to take place, the line and power line will come through, instead of crisscrossing. According to my uh, stay here, within these two days I've learned a lot with the workshop. And now I have found out the problems with the shelter, and it's true that in my community, men always leave the ladies. We're struggling to uh, fix the houses on our own at times of lack of materials. We try our best to collect what is available for us to make our shelter. Knowing that it's men's job, but they have failed to do that. And I learned something that when I get back, I have to tell the ladies that they have to tell their husbands to build a better house so that the kids and the ladies can sit in a proper house where they can look after the kids because most of the time men always leave ladies and we struggle while they have the pleasure going out enjoying their lives. At this moment we are lacking with our materials. We have lack of uh, better timbers, not enough trees to build new houses, uh, lack of roofing, flooring, so these are very big problems, but it's very hard for us, difficult for us to get them. And I don't know where to get them at this time. So we will try our best. Some who have enough spaces will go according to that. Uh, some who have very little spaces, they, can, they have to squeeze up. My name is Peshen Gilbert. I am the Simsimla Ward Councillor. I am from the most remote uh, uh, part of Kiruna, not west of Kiruna Island. Because our island updates are very remote and most of the disaster which happening here, normally every year, that occurs in our island. That's why this uh, program when the IOM and disaster restructuring step in, so we are very interested to get the information and how to get all these like uh, ideas to get back to our community and apply with, within our community. It's very very great and very safe to get my people live uh, how they live in standards because last time I think we had our disaster risk reduction in December and uh, the plan was to cut down how, how the situations when the disaster appears and now this time this year I mean yeah beginning of this time this year and I am stepping to give, give us on the safe, other training on the safe shelter that's to go back and tell the community how to provide shelters for themselves on their own living. This is a very important issue that uh, our being, how we've been happy, I've been experienced with the, my island people or my community. Our shelters are not being uh, proper organized and it's already been like remote. So when they step in to teach us this uh, activity or the course of their workshop that we have to go back and get the ideas of how we train here and apply to the community to be in the modern standard. The participants have a duty to pass on what they have attained from the Safe Shelter Workshop to their community members, and this is how they plan to do it. It's very easy because I am one of the health workers. During the clinics, I can talk to the ladies, or even when I'm giving awareness, I will talk to the ladies because we have a very nice a partnership that we always do. Even we do gardening together. 
that's where we will, I will motivate the mothers to talk to their husbands and even we have community work on Friday which ladies have their right to speak up to the men. What we are going to do is we will um, arrange uh, with our community and you know talk to them and uh, 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 arrange for a meeting uh, where we can uh, what we learned here to impart this, you know, to our our people in our community, so they can uh, uh, do what we, you know, IOM, you know, has come up with, you know, for us to help ourselves. It's not for them to come and help us, you know, but for us to help ourselves, so maybe they can uh, get in and, you know, help us to, you know, make the, you know, program work. If I go back with my group, we have to sit around with the community, gather gather them together. And then we apply whatever the lessons have been being practiced, and then we apply to them, and then we can go awareness. At the same time, we we'll do the activity I would do it, and then it can be sure what we are, you know, doing with our community. I'm not really, you know, thank grateful to the IOM people with your news people up here to get in all these programs up there, to, so my government can step in, and everybody can step in to join and work together as one all. IOM engaged a humanitarian benchmark consulting or HBC to facilitate the safe shelter workshops. The facilitators now speak of what they have seen upon doing assessments on the selected communities considered to be vulnerable to natural disasters. The International Organization for Migration or IOM has engaged a humanitarian benchmark consulting or HBC to conduct a series of shelter assessments in areas considered to be vulnerable to extreme weather conditions, then followed by the safe shelter workshops. Humanitarian Benchmark Consulting has worked in a number of different countries across uh, mostly the Asia and the Pacific. Um, and you find that every country you go to has a new set of challenges and a, um, a new set of shelter issues that you're faced with. Um, mostly the solutions are already in the country, so it's, it's basically just trying to uh, work with, work with the, the communities in the country and trying to, to find out the solutions that already exist. After conducting assessments, HBC consultants have come to see the diversity of shelters in Papua New Guinea. There is an amazing diversity of shelter and housing across Papua New Guinea um, and that really, that really defines the country um, and it also means that there's, there's not one solution for shelter and that um, the solution really none, needs to come from the community because they are the people that know the risks, they know the hazards but they also have been building for hundreds and hundreds of years in, in different areas of Papua New Guinea and the reason the shelters and the houses are so different is because they've been, um, they've adapted basically to the location that they're living in and so it's formed the traditional architectural style of, of the areas. However, according to the assessments carried out, it is seen that Papua New Guineans in communities are integrating traditional and modern materials to build their homes, which can be good and safe but also unsafe to some extent if they do not have the skills and knowledge on how to use these materials to build safe homes. Often when this happens, the, tradi the traditional styles are being lost um, and people are falling back onto, uh, they're basically copying other styles that they're seeing rather than looking back into their history and looking at the traditional building styles of of construction in Papua New Guinea. What we found in the fields, they lose their skill and to build traditional houses because there's inspiration. They got a new material, but there's without any skill. So 
maybe because Papua New Guinea has like diversity and I think best answer best solution is in that community so better to look to their local wisdom back to their history how they built that shelter when it comes to building safe homes it is the responsibility for both men and women everyone has their own role in safe shelter and for women it's really interesting because when we did our first assessment when we just go around and take a data uh, mostly I talk with women and when we have our data it's really interesting to see the different answer for them so how men looks house and how women look like home it's more like maintenance and I think it's important to hear that their uh, thought because they spend more time at house than men so it's, it's interesting in the workshops that we did because um, we're talking about safe shelter but when you're talking about the safety of shelter and houses it doesn't necessarily mean that you're talking about strengthening the house about actually physically changing the house sometimes the solution for making a shelter safer is actually within the community or it might be it might be something completely different that's not actually related to the house itself but the end solution still makes the house safer for so for example um, some of the communities that we went to were, were looking at um, high population and increasing population. So uh, the, the solution isn't necessarily about making stronger houses, but it's about education and about um, improving, improving the way they look at this issue so that, so that they can actually have a um, sustainable future and that it's, it's not necessarily about the structure of the house. And that's why it's really important to include everyone in this process of, of actually strengthening the house. Welcome back to Olsem 1M. We now feature a short segment of a film produced by the International Organization for Migration in collaboration with the United States Agency for International Development, better known as USAID, called Hazards in Papua New Guinea. Building Safer Houses Before constructing a building, it is important to understand the type of soil over which it will be built and create safe, solid foundations. It is recommended that the top part of the foundation is a minimum of 60 centimeters below ground level. The bottom part of the foundation, as well as its size, will depend on the size and weight of the building and soil type. Sandy and clay soils are very soft and not stable. If your land is either on sand or clay, then make sure your foundations for your building are very deep and wide. Harder types of soil found on rockier terrain provides a more stable base for the foundation of a building. Although it can be a lot of work to dig the foundation, it is still the most suitable for construction. We have already discussed locating buildings away from possible threats like floodplains or coastlines. It was also discussed ways to strengthen buildings by using diagonal bracing in wall structures and the use of strong bindings of structural beams. By selecting safer areas, creating secure foundations, stronger walls and more secure fixings, your home will be a safer place to live. We hope that you learned a few useful suggestions to keep you and your family safer from disasters. 
This video has not gone into great detail in each section, but hopefully you are inspired to learn more and make your home and family safer. That's all we have time for on this episode of All Sam 1M. If you have any questions or comments, please email us on the address now showing on your screen. You can also check out our All Sam 1M Facebook page. To view this episode online, log on to our MTV website where you will find a link to the All Sam 1M page. From the All Sam 1M team, I'm Florence John Duo. Thank you for watching and it's goodbye for now. <music> <laughs>